Hello folks. Well you know in the seven years that I've now lived here in the Midwest, I've never gotten a snowmobile. It's just too damn cold and I'm not a fan of that. Well I saw these RC snowmobiles for years and I've read reviews about them online. So after looking up the ski dues for 40 bucks and then reading the poor reviews, many folks say they're too slow, many say the batteries don't last long, many say the range is low, and many say it's cheaply made. Well, that sounds perfect for me. <laughs> so I decided to step up to the Polaris. Well the reason is I read the ads and they say it's officially the licensed version of Polaris. And I figured if they were actually going to put their name on it, it had to be better and more representative of the product. I didn't do any research or read any of the reviews on this one, and that way I could remain totally unbiased. Well, here's how it went down. First of all, it looks beautiful in the box, and I was anxious to open it. When I did, I noticed the antenna was loose on the back fender. I figured, no problem, I'll just retighten it. Well, the snowmobile requires seven batteries and one nine volt battery. That's a lot of batteries. I think we're gonna go through them pretty fast. Uh, I buy 20 at the dollar store Alkaline for uh, five bucks. And uh, this for the transmitter. You know, if you've got rechargeable batteries, uh, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and, and uh, use those instead. That takes a while to charge. Put the batteries in and turned it on. Nothing switch on and off, switch on and off, still nothing. Well, upon further inspection, I found the battery box tab on the corner was completely broken off. At this point, I began to suspect whether this was a return or just bad quality from the manufacturer. Decided to go ahead and try and fix it, then return it myself. Well, that episode took me almost an hour and a bunch of guesswork to figure out how to get that back fender open. It turns out that I had to completely disassemble the whole thing just to be able to get that fender open. And once I did, I found the broken part and the antenna wire unhooked and broken. I figured I could just reattach the antenna and then solder a wire to it, but I found I actually couldn't because it's made of stainless steel. So I measured the length and cut a regular wire to the same size and soldered it on. Then I attached the metal antenna to the frame with zip ties and coiled the wire around the antenna. Since doing this, I've had no range problems at all, not even a glitch. Well then, after finally figuring out how to put it all back together, as all the screws are a different size and of a Phillips configuration that only one of my big screwdrivers actually fit, I put the batteries in and here's what happened. Well the first thing I notice is that none of the controls are proportional. It either runs wide open or off, either in reverse or forward. There's no way to creep slow with it. Well, and the steering is the same. There's no proportion. It is either full left or full right, and no proportional servos in it to even switch radios and try something different. The steering is actually a motor that turns one way or the other with a clutch set up when it reaches the end. I think it's a bit of overkill with lots of parts for such an old-fashioned RC system. Well, be that as it may, here's how it runs on the indoor land and the snow outside. The temperature outside today is a cool 10 degrees and the wind is blowing at 6 mile per hour. Let's go for a ride.
The alkaline battery is good for about 20 minutes of runtime. Then you just throw seven batteries away and pop in seven new ones. Or put in some rechargeables. Well, as you can see, it's pretty rough on this hard frozen snow. And uh, maybe going any faster may be kind of hard on it. But I'm going to go ahead and put a 2.4 gigahertz radio in it with proportional speed control and hopped up motor. The steering may not be as easy to change to digital proportional, but if you stay tuned, you're going to see what I do with my upcoming mods. All in all, it's pretty cool, but for 77 bucks, I think it at least should have come with an action figure driver. And thanks a lot for watching, folks.